Okay, so here are your video notes for just general phylum arthropoda characteristics. So characteristics of arthropods. First of all, the name, mean, the name arthropod itself means jointed foot. So they have a modified segmentation, which means their body regions are specialized for specific functions. So this is the first time we're really seeing organisms that have an organ almost like system similar to humans. This is known as tagmatization. So there's a chitinous exoskeleton used for support and protection. So most of you, I'm sure, are very familiar, especially when you think of different crustaceans. And they also have paired jointed appendage, appendages, so like limbs, mouth parts, antenna, etc. And their growth is accompanied by molting, something termed ecdysis. Some more characteristics, they have a ventral nervous system. If you remember, ventral means on the belly or the bottom. And they have a true but reduced coelom. So the reason for this is that it only forms, well, it only forms around their gonads and some other respiratory um, or excretory organs. But the reason being is they have something else that's around all their other organs. So they really don't need this full coelom similar to like humans, for example. So that open circulatory system with the hemocell is what helps them not really need their coelom. They also have a complete digestive tract, meaning goes in one end, out the other, and something called metamorphosis. Whoops. Something called metamorphosis is also often present. Most of you, when you think about metamorphosis, you think about a caterpillar into a butterfly. So arthropods <coughs> are successful in almost all habitats on Earth. They are the most abundant animals with several million species identified, and 30 to 50 million species, species still may yet be undescribed. Most of what people are discovering in terms of new species are generally some sort of insect, technically. Um, they're triploblastic, protostome development, they have bilateral symmetry, and there's four major aspects that contribute to their success in general. So we're going to get into each one of these on the following slides. So number one, the metamerism. This is, like we talked about previously, the segmentation. But it's only really external. It's not inside their body, so it's evident from the outside. Each segment, in turn, has an appendage, so something that sticks out, whether it's a leg, antenna, mouth part, wing, whatever it may be. And the body cavity is not divided internally, so they don't have segments on the inside, just externally. And this allows that specialization of regions in the body. And like we discussed on the previous slide, this is known as tagmatization. So these body regions can do certain things like feeding. Oops. Like feeding, sensory, locomotion, and visceral functions. The exoskeleton is largely why arthropods in general are so successful. So it's an external jointed skeleton, like we said, it has its segments, and it provides that support and protection, but it also prevents water loss. And it's a system of levers for muscle attachment and movement. It's secreted by the epidermal cells or skin. Is When you think of epidermis, you should think of skin. And it's covered by the exoskeleton. So the soft tissue of the body is under this exoskeleton. And there's two major layers. You have the epicuticle and the procuticle or endocuticle. And we'll get into each one of those here in just a minute. So the hardening of the procuticle is what provides that armor that they have. And there's also some modifications, like we said, so you can have your joints, your sensory receptors, gas exchange, and like we talked about in the beginning, they do shed, some insects shed. So the exoskeleton allows shedding to occur like, is what hap like what's happening in this picture. So here's your two different layers. So the epicuticle is this top green layer. And then the procuticle is all of this. Now there's different parts to the procuticle, which we'll talk about in a second. But the epicuticle, is, it's waxy. It's that waxy outer covering. It's waterproof. That is the epicuticle. 
the procuticle is composed of two parts, so exo, endo, you know exo means out, endo means in, so the exo is going to be closer to the epicuticle than the endo is. And this is still tough, it's not waxy and waterproof, it's actually made of the chitin, which if you remember from maybe biology, that's what the cell walls of fungi are made of, it's also what makes the beaks of squid. So this part is, it's tough, and it's made of chitin. So this also hardens as the animal develops from a calcium carbonate being deposited, but it's important to note that this inner portion still stays soft. So once you move up, it's going to get harder and harder because it's closer to the outside of the body. So it has to be that exoskeleton, but inside it's going to be still a little smooth to allow for movement, flight, etc. And then you have your epidermis that's inside that is totally soft like skin. So the hemocell which we mentioned earlier, provides that cavity for the open circulatory system and it protects the organs that they may have. It also allows for exchange of nutrients, waste, and sometimes gases. So it reduces the need for the coelom. So this is why... So the, the hemocell is why there's a reduced coelom. And <clears throat> it's actually derived from the blastocell, which helps do the blastula and other organisms. And then metamorphosis. This is probably another thing that you're very familiar with. <coughs> it's a form of direct develop or indirect development, excuse me. So what it basically means is it's a significant change in the physiology from the immature form to the adult. If you look here at this picture, you have something that's starting as an egg, looks like a caterpillar, which looks nothing like a butterfly. Then we have the pupa and the cocoon, and then you have a butterfly. So if you notice, they're very different. And the potentially the biggest reason why metamorphosis is so beneficial to insects is because it reduces the competition. A caterpillar isn't going to eat the same thing as a butterfly, so they're not competing for space or food. So there's three different types of metamorphosis. So there's the A metabolis, which this is something maybe you're not all that familiar with. It's typically in more pro like more prehistoric type insects, the ones that are primitive. So the example is a silverfish if you've ever seen one of those. This just means the only difference from larva to adult is body size and sexual maturity. That's it. And it's important to note, too, that the adults and larvae are both wingless. Now, the hemimetabolis metabolis is species-specific number of molts. The thing that's different about this is that they look exactly the same. The only difference is the immatures are nymphs and they have no wings. So a good example here is a grasshopper. So grasshoppers, when they're immature, they look exactly like a grasshopper, they're just teeny, and they have no wings. And as they go through their molts and their stages, they get bigger and bigger, and eventually, by the time they're an adult, they have full wings. Now, the holometabolus is probably the one you're most familiar with. So this one, the larva, is very different from the adults. It doesn't look the same. It's what we talked about on the previous page. So in this situation... There's a larva, pupa, and a cocoon before you reach the adult stage. There's not always the cocoon stage, but there's a for sure a larva and a pupa. And this one, the most common, is a monarch. Oh, and the ametabolus is a silverfish. And just another word on metamorphosis is the evolution of arthropods has caused even more differences in metamorphosis. There's even more body forms, there's more behaviors, there's more time between immature and adult stages. Even the habitats are becoming more drastic between immature and adult stages. And that's, once again, helping the evolution of arthropods in general. So a couple examples listed here. 
So larval crabs feed on plankton, whereas adult crabs feed for live prey, so they're not competing whatsoever. And then the one you're most familiar with, caterpillars feed on leafy vegetables, and adult butterfly feeds on nectar. So two totally different food sources.